Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is Reverend Rosemary with you this evening, thanking God for this wonderful opportunity that we have to meet again at the table of his word. We're going to open our study with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We come with hearts ready to hear and receive all that you have for us today. Lord, we ask that you would open the eyes of our understanding so that we can see wonderful things in your word. And we pray that these revelations, O oh God, be written upon the tables of our hearts so that we can be quick to obey, that we may be changed by your word, O oh God, and that we may become more and more into the likeness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness and for watching over your word to fulfill it in our lives to the glory of your most holy name, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, in our last two studies, uh, we have uh, looked at a series that I've entitled Our Oneness with Christ. And um, this series is aimed at helping us grasp the importance of seeing the revealed Jesus of Scripture, uh, to know who we are in him, uh, referring to our identity and then also to understand how to uh, how we are to function like him. Uh, and this refers to our ability, our purpose, and even our relationship with the Father. So these studies are based on two main scripture references, which are 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17, that tells us that as he is, that is Jesus, as he is, so are we in this world. Amen. And then the second uh, reference is 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17, which states that he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. And so we opened um, this series of teaching by expounding on seeing Jesus with the eyes of our heart. And this eventually reveals to us just how much uh, Jesus is our peace, our joy, our hope, our life. Amen. Uh, the Word of God tells us that, you know, it is in Him that we live and move and have our being. Amen. Um, and therefore, you know, He is our all in all. And when we allow the Holy Spirit to reveal uh you know, Jesus to us, we, when we can see him uh, with, again, the eyes of our heart, this fills us with hope, with divine enablement to overcome the enemy. And also it equips us to be used by him as his vessels, amen, to, to be, you know, be a blessing to uh, our generation. And this actually ends up being a fulfillment of of First John 3, 8, which states that for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. So when we allow God to reveal Jesus to us and that, you know, we are equipped to be used by him, um, it is a manifestation of the destruction of the works of the devil. And the, the advancement of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. And uh, then we proceeded with um, our next lesson, our second lesson, uh, which focused on the new creation um, and the believer's consciousness of his, you know, his new condition and position as a new creation. And this is key to... Uh, the believer's Christian walk and success, because God really, what he has for us, uh, you know, his plans and purposes are that we live a life uh, of righteousness and of fruitfulness. Amen. Uh, such revelation is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verses 17 and 21, um, 
Well, let's go ahead and look at these passages. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 says that if a man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Amen. And then we also learn from that same chapter, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that God the Father made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. So uh, again, we see from these two references, verses 17 and verse uh, and 21, that not only uh, a born-again person has now become a new creation in Christ, and um, but that he has also been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Um, and so I'm going to quickly <clears throat> recap on some of the main points that we covered in our last lesson on the new creation, because today's lesson is going to be a continuation, amen, of that particular topic on the new creation. So our lesson would be entitled, Our Oneness with Christ, A New Creation Continued, amen, or part two. So let's quickly recap again on some of the main points that we covered in our last lesson. Uh, to begin with, with our focus um, was on the fact that we are spirit beings, amen, um, before we came to Christ. Uh, we were spirit because as soon as a person is born into this world, it is a spirit being. Amen. However, the spirit being is because of the, the Adamic nature that we are born with. Our spirits are dead to the things of God. Amen. And as a dead, unrighteous spirit, then we were tied to what the Bible calls the curse. Amen. And now, however, as a new creation in Christ, um, we are no longer limited, amen, to natural things because we have become alive with God. The old person um, has died. Uh, that unrighteous spirit um, has died, amen. And as a result um, of our becoming alive unto God, we see that the limitations are gone, the impossibilities are gone. Uh, the carnal, fleshly person that was filled with the life and nature of the devil is has died, and therefore um, there is no longer any connection to the things of darkness, uh, to the kingdom of the enemy. Um, you know, this is a foundational truth that we must get hold on hold of that, um, you know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16, that from the, this point on that we have become a new creation in Christ, that we are to regard no one according to the flesh. Amen. And um, you and I in Christ um, speaks of our spirits that are now alive unto God and alive unto spiritual things. So the flesh is no longer our focus. Amen. And um, I spent you know, a great deal of time explaining this, but uh, again, in our recap, hopefully we can you know, just highlight um, the, 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 the importance of the fact that you know, we are spirit beings and that this is our reality as born again believers. Hallelujah. And so um, we have to learn to see ourselves as uh, spirit beings and identify as a spirit. Amen. We have to know that, uh, for example, me, the real me is a spirit. I am a spirit um, who has a soul and lives in a body. Amen. Um, and one thing that I highlighted the last time was that... Um, this goes beyond saying that we are getting the word of God inside of us uh, because then we are looking at ourselves as, um, you know, just our having a spirit rather than us being a spirit. 
Amen. So uh, my, for example, my spirit is me. So your spirit, therefore, cannot, cannot, you know, you cannot refer to yourself as my spirit. You have to refer to your spirit as you. Amen. Your spirit is you. And so uh, we need to understand that we interact with the spiritual realm, uh, with our spirit. That's the only way we can interact with the spiritual realm. Uh, however, with our soul, um, we function and operate with, if you could call it the intellectual and emotional realm. Uh, and whereas our body is the tool that God gave us to interact with the physical realm. Amen. Uh, regrettably, you know, because we have spent so long in the world and, you know, thinking, uh, being fashioned by the world system, uh, believers are allowing the natural realm uh, that is the flesh and the body to be uh, their identifier when actually uh, th that natural realm cannot tell us who we are as spirit beings. Amen. And so we are to regard ourselves and others as a spirit. Amen. And this is very crucial. And this is why I'm, you know, forging ahead today uh, in a second part of this study so we can truly get the, the well, if I can say the whole picture as much as possible. Amen. Because this is such an extensive subject. So, um, you know, we also, uh, one of the things that, that we, we saw in our last lesson is that because Jesus is spirit and we are spirit, um, we should not look to the Jesus who was on the earth as a man um, and identify with him. Although Jesus was perfect, uh, however, we no longer look to that man and we no longer identify with him because we are now called to identify with the glorified Christ. Amen. And because Jesus became the last Adam, he came to finish off the Adamic race and start something new. And that something new is exactly what we're talking about, this new creation in Christ, which is something that never existed before. And he did that so that the old way of life would be gone and a new way of life would begin. Amen. And this new way would be made up of his glorified life. Why? Because we are in him. Uh, and we saw that, you know, after Jesus's resurrection, he receives all power and authority, and then he delegates this authority to his disciples. Amen. And so we, we must not think of the disciples as just the ones who were alive, you know, when Jesus was there, um, you know, who saw him uh, uh, again, you know, who were with him during his ministry, who saw him as a man walking on this earth. However, we have to see him, amen, um, as the glorified Christ, because he receives all power and all authority, and he delegates that power to anyone who becomes his, his disciple. Amen. So all born-again believers, if we truly of followers of Christ. We are his disciples, and this is for us. Amen. Hallelujah. So our, our identification is with the risen, the glorified Christ, who is now seated at the right hand of the Father. But, you know, notice that uh, it doesn't stop there. But we, we are told in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6 that we are seated together with him in heavenly places. Amen. So we can therefore understand how relevant this is to our life here. Seeing ourselves as a spirit has to do with first our identity, amen, who we are in Christ, a new creation in Christ. We've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, amen. And because of that, now this, this allows us to operate from this new position so that we can access and release the things of heaven. Amen. And so truly, you know, no one can access a world that he's not aware of. Nobody can do that. So, you know, this study is about 
making us aware or more aware that we are spirit beings, amen, uh, that we have a new identity and that because of this new identity, we can now, we have access to the spiritual world and um, we are able to walk in the way that God intends us to walk as part of that spiritual world. Amen. So pressing into our study, um, you know, just let, let's think about how um, most Christian talk uh, in regards to hearing from God and moving in the supernatural. Amen. Um, you know, again, because we have spent uh, so long you know, walking in the world system, we find that um, people, and I'm talking about um, believers, uh, they act like as if it is abnormal for, for us, um, you know, the body of Christ, uh, to experience the power of God, um, to move in the supernatural. They find it abnormal. Um, and the reason is primarily because, again, you know, there is a lack of understanding that we are spirit beings. Uh, just as we have physical senses, um, you know, hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, etc., cetera, um, we also have spiritual senses. Amen. And so, you know, we have to train ourselves. We have to learn to, you know, be, be good at being spirits rather than seeing ourselves as just, you know, a, a body with, you know, emotions and, you know, senses and, you know, with a soul, let's put it this way, a body and a soul. Um, but rather we are to learn to really walk as spirit beings, see ourselves. Amen. And the more that we recognize that um, we are spirits, uh, the, the better we will become at it. Amen. And the more alive our spiritual senses will become. Amen. Um, you know, we must become more conscious, more and more conscious of who we are so that we can access and use the things that we have at our disposal. And, you know, as spirit beings, we have spiritual tools. We have spiritual equipment uh, and, you know, spiritual senses. And therefore, it is normal that we should um, hear and see and taste and smell and feel uh, in the spirit realm. So in reality, uh, it should just, you know, it should be just as easy and normal for a believer to hear from God as hearing from a human person. Why? Because we are spirit. So therefore, it should not be something abnormal to us. Uh, God is spirit. He is the father of all spirit. And Jesus is spirit. Um, and because of that, we, we can fellowship. We can walk in the spirit. Um, we can live in the spirit. And um, why again? That, can we do that? Because we are spirits. We belong to the spirit realm. The real us is spirit. Amen. And therefore, uh, spiritual things should be natural to us, but we have allowed the natural world to become what is normal to us. Um, and then when we accidentally experience something miraculous, um, we act as if it's abnormal. But as we just saw, uh, the supernatural should be natural for us at this point. Amen. Uh, notice what we are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, that you know, we are not to look at the things which are seen, amen, in other words, from a natural standpoint or from the physical realm, but that we are to look at the things which are not seen. It says, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal, amen. And, um, you know, it's, it's regrettable that too many Christians are looking at the things that are seen to determine whether the supernatural is working. So the other way, you know, in other words, um, 
you know, most of the the church, I think we have it backwards. Amen. Um, we are looking to the things of the world to tell us um, if God has spoken or what God is doing, um, you know, if his word is true and who God has made us to be. Um, you see, God did not put us in this world to get our knowledge from the world. God put us in the world to change the world, not to really learn from it. You know, he puts us in this world uh, to change it with the supernatural power of God. In other words, from the person we are within, amen, not from the outside. But most of us, you know, we have no clue that we are uh, a spirit being and that we have access to spiritual things. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of those who uh, do know that we are spirit being, um, they barely have a clue of really what it actually means for us. You know, um, they have not learned to tap into that spiritual realm. Um, but what we have to remember, it, has, it is, as we just saw in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 18, that it is the unseen thing that are eternal. It is the things of the spirit, uh, the world we are from. Um, it is that world that does not change, but yet it has the power to change this natural or physical world that we currently live in. And so we actually exercise our power from the um, spirit realm, our authority from the spirit realm in order to change the things in the natural realm. And this is why, again, we are told um, that we are not, we are to walk by faith and not by sight. I believe Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 tells us that, that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, we are to walk by the spirit and not the flesh. You know, you know, it takes faith to walk in what you cannot see with your, with our spiritual eye. I mean, with our natural eyes, it takes faith. But what we must remember that it is what we cannot see from the natural standpoint that will produce the result in the the, the, the realm of what we can see. Amen. The solution, the answers, everything is made, it's created from the spirit realm, and then it materializes in the natural realm. So we have to go to the original, to the place where these things are, everything is made, and it is made from the spirit realm. So realizing that we are a spirit being united with God is something that totally revolutionizes our lives and causes us to start looking to our spirit, to the God who is inside of us, instead of looking at our flesh um, from a you know a carnal mindset and a look from looking it you know it changes us from looking to the God that is outside of us because we learn then to focus on the God who is inside of us. Hallelujah. And so I believe that toward the end of our last lesson, we spoke of how everything is tied uh, to this very, you know, basic piece that in Christ, we are a new creation. Um, and therefore we are spirit beings. And then also that we've been, been made one with Christ, as we mentioned at the very beginning of the study. One of the best scriptures there, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, that tells us that he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Amen. Um, it is therefore crucial that we learn to think and operate as a spirit because it not only affects our identity and accessing the things of heaven, amen, uh, as we you know go before God, but it also affects our understanding of the power of our words. Amen. Um, you know, today we have access to God's word like no other generation. You know, even in the Old Testament um, and the people in the book of, you know, the, the New Testament, the people in the book of Acts. Um, you know, and in today's world, although we keep hearing uh, and hearing and hearing, 
and also confessing the word of God. Um, generally, I would say that we, we can agree that a lot of this has been without much result. Many people in the body of Christ end up disappointed or, you know, they end up rationalizing and telling themselves that the reason for, you know, this lack of results is that we need more word. But then again, as I just said, and we all can see, like, you know, we have access to God's word like no other generation before. So the question is, how much more word do we need in, you know, do we need to know in order to get the results that, uh, you know, we desire, that we see that the word promises us. And when we, so when we study really the disciples' lives and ministries, what I, I see at least is that they walked in revelation um, that believers today need to get hold of. Um, in order to see the results that they desire. And this revelation has to do with, you know, about who we truly are. They had revelation about who they truly were. Amen. And um, they, they, they knew about the person within this new creation in Christ, this spirit being. And, you know, notice that, for example, um, in Romans chapter 10, in verse 17, we are told that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, the, the, the word here um, that is used when it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, that word is the Greek for rhema, R-H-E-M-A, amen, and which does not speak of the written word, but it, sp it speaks of the spoken word, meaning hearing from God, receiving revelation from God, fellowshipping through the revelation that we receive from God. Amen. And so when we get that revelation and we can see ourselves as God sees us, amen, as spirit beings, we will know as I said earlier, the power of our words. We will know that we are, you know, spirit, speaking spirits, and that our words are carriers of God's power, and that they are spirit, and that they are life. And, you know, any sh anything short of looking at ourselves as such, uh, meaning as God sees us, knowing, you know, and knowing the, who we truly are, that we are spirit beings, um, anything short of that is operating from the natural flesh realm, and therefore it will not produce the results that we desire. Um, I would like for a moment to examine uh, Paul's uh, words in, I believe it's Romans, Romans chapter five. <clears throat> Romans, I'm sorry, no, Romans chapter eight, verses five and six. And I'm going to read from the New King James Version, Romans 8, verses 5 and 6. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. So what is Paul saying here? He's saying that, when we are carnally or fleshly minded, then what, what is produced from that is death. Uh, in other words, those who set their minds on the things of the flesh, amen, will reap what the Bible calls death or destruction. But to be spiritually minded or operating from, uh, from who we are, from the spirit man, amen, ends up producing life. Uh, it's the life of God, and it's accompanied by peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I'm going to come back to the, to this about being spiritually minded. Amen. And um, pro, and and the fact that once if we are, then the product of it is life and peace. We're going to look at that life. Amen. What this life of God is all about. But um. 
But what I'm saying right now, though, is that trying to do things with the mindset of a body or of a mere human being uh, living according to the flesh without spiritual or spiritual understanding uh, might not be what you would call committing sins per se, but it is being carnally minded because it does not take into consideration the spirit being that we are. And so it's thinking from a carnal mindset. And we see that thinking from a carnal mindset produces death. Whereas when we think from the spiritual standpoint, amen, then the, what, what happens is that we reap life and peace, amen. So speaking, when, when we talk about being carnally minded, again, we must not think of it in terms of going around and committing sins. That's not all that it means. There is a lot more to it. Amen. And I would say it. I would say that actually it it is um more even foundational to realize that if we don't align uh, align our thinking with God's thinking, and if we don't see things, we don't see things from His own perspective, then we set ourselves up for destruction, for death. Why? Because we are being carnally minded. So I know some people might get offended to think, well, well, no, I'm not carnally minded because I don't commit this sin or that sin. Yeah, but if our perspective, you know, is not God's perfect perspective, if we're not looking at things the way he looks at them, then the only other way we can be looking at it, it's from the carnal mindset, from the natural mindset, which is not going to yield the life of God. Amen. And so the opposite of the life of God is death. So we can only have one or the other and not both. Amen. So uh, one thing that we had spoken also is um, how uh, before coming to Christ, we were already a spirit. Amen. However, we were dead to the things of God. And um, but now we have to realize that as a new creation in Christ, we are alive with God. And that the old man, the old person um, has died and that that fleshly person, amen, um, that was filled with the life and nature of the devil is gone. And again, because of that, because we are now alive unto God and to spiritual things, the limitations, the impossibilities are gone. Hallelujah. And this is something foundational. Amen. A foundational truth that we truly have to get hold of. Amen. And we have to become conscious of so that from this point on, we can live by what, what we read already, 2 Corinthians 5, 16, that tells us that we are no longer to regard anyone according to the flesh. Amen. So if God really expects us to be spiritually minded, we conclude that, number one, um, we can be conscious of the things of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is our teacher. He is our guide. He is the one who empowers us. He is the one who reveals things to us. So we can indeed be conscious of the things of the, things of the Holy Spirit, of heavenly things, which will produce life and peace. And we can also be conscious of of who we are, we can that we can think as a spirit, we can see as a spirit, we can act and do as a spirit. Amen. And therefore, we are in a position to produce life, to produce peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, but as long as a believer chooses to be carnally minded, to think like a sinner, um, all he will try to do um, is really imitate Jesus, but this is not going to work because no matter how much scripture a person knows or memorizes, um, it doesn't mean that this person knows God. Amen. And so all of us, uh, without exception, we all have to work at learning to think like a spirit, learning to um, live from that spiritual position, 
because this is the reality of who we are. And this is foundational to our Christian growth and success. And um, because this is what will cause us to produce spiritual things. It will cause us to live a spiritual life. Amen. And will ultimately allow us to minister the word of God in power so that, you know, we can win the lost and advance God's kingdom here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, let me go ahead and as we're moving on, turn to John, the book of John, chapter 14. And we are looking at two verses, verse 10 and verse 12. John 14, verses 10 and 12. Believeth thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Amen. Notice that Jesus here, he's speaking about the words that he speaks and the works that he does. And what he, what we learn in essence from this passage is that Jesus was operating as a man anointed by God, amen, that he was the son of God, hallelujah. However, that he, although he had, he had, he had stripped himself of everything that would give him an advantage um, over men, but he, but he made sure to strip himself from that. And however, he was positioned to hear from God, speak the work, words of God, and do the words, words of God. Why? Because he was anointed by God. Acts 10 38 tells us how Jesus Christ of Nazareth was anointed with power and the Holy Spirit, that he went around doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. Well, Jesus needed to be anointed because he had stripped himself of everything that would uh, give him an advantage over men. And he decided to come to the earth as a man. Uh, we learned that from Philippians chapter 2. Amen. Verses 7 and 8 tells us that. But uh, Jesus also knew that he was sent on a mission. And, you know, he made sure to walk in that power to back up his words and fulfill the mission. So just like Jesus um, was sent on a mission and was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, we too, we have been sent on a mission from heaven and we've been given the power of heaven to fulfill all that God has called us to do. And God did not send us here without some weaponry and some proof of who we are. You know, as we read verse these verses, John 14 verses 10 and 12, we see specifically in verse 12, he says, let me read that again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Amen. So Jesus gave really one qualifier here to be able to do all the supernatural, uh, extraordinary works that he did. And to and manifest the power, you know that that is that belongs to our home that is in heaven, Amen. And this qualifier is this: we have to believe in Him. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these, because I go unto my Father. So the qualifier to do these extraordinary works and manifest. This power that is from heaven, he says, is to be a believer in him. Amen. But what I also want us to uh, notice is that we not only have power, but there is a quality to this power that we have been given. Um, if we read Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, we are told that if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, meaning 
the, you know, you and I, the body of Christ, then he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. Amen. So notice, again, we are talking about not just the fact that we have power, amen, and the, the qualifier is that we believe on, on the Lord Jesus Christ, and now we belong to him. Amen. We've become this new creation in Christ. We've become this spirit being. Amen. And this spirit being, now we, we are told that the spirit of God, of the Father, amen, who the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, in this new creation. Amen. So we see that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in us right now. Amen. So as born again believers, new creations in Christ, we have the life of God within. We carry divine life. We carry divine energy and supernatural power in our reborn spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, in, in this new creation, we carry all of this. And this life is the Greek word zoe, which means the life that God has and the life that God is. Amen. So just think of it. You and I, if we are truly born again, we carry inside of us the life that God has and the life that God is. So, so we realize really that the purpose of redemption was to get the same life that God has into us, into his creation. Amen. God wanted that same life into he, you and I. Amen. That is why we are told um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, that we are the temple of God. Amen. That the temple of God is holy. We are the holy temple of God, that God dwells in us. Amen. So once the spirit of God comes to live in us, we are no longer in the flesh or in sin and under the law of the old covenant. This life of God within us now dominates our spirit. It makes it alive. Amen. It uh, gives it vigor and vitality daily. Praise God. Remember we read from Romans chapter 8, and verse 11, that not only do we have that spirit in us, amen, but that spirit that rose Christ from the dead will also quicken our mortal body by his spirits that dwell in us. So we are constantly being invigorated by this life of God that is in us, that dominates our spirit. It's continually making it alive. And, you know, the apostle Paul prayed that uh, the church of Ephesus might get that revelation and get to experience that power. Amen. So the, uh, the this prayer that the apostle prayed, uh, you know, it's also, it's meant actually for the church period. At that time, yes, he was addressing the church of Ephesus, but this is meant for every disciple of Christ. When he writes in first, the, sorry, in Ephesians chapter one and verse 20, he's praying that the eyes, um, I'm sorry, verse 18 to 20, that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of God's calling, um, that we might know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And then he goes on in verse 19, he says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe? So we ought to know what is the exceeding greatness of the power towards world who believe according to the working of his mighty power, when, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Amen. So we see that Paul prayed for the church of Ephesus to get that revelation and because of that, to be able to walk in that revelation and experience the power of God. Amen. This exceedingly great power that he used to raise Christ from the dead, because that power now is resident in the believer. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Um, there are a few more uh, scriptures that I would like to look at, amen, so we can develop this, I, you know, th this idea here of this power that flows through us, that life, you know, the life of God that now lives in us. Um, I would like to look at John chapter 15, John 15 verses 4 and 5, amen. Again, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples, and he says, Abide in and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vein, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Amen. Now, notice that Jesus is saying here that the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. And then he goes, he explains, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Amen. And then he, he explains that we have to abide in him. And this is, it, it's when, this is when we'll be able to bear the type of fruit that he's looking for. So in other words, what he's telling us is what flows through him flow, flows through us. Amen. And there's no exception in that. Amen. Um, you know, it's impossible for a different set of nutrients and minerals to go through the trunk and a different and another one, a different type, a different set of nutrient and minerals to go through the branches. It's actually the very same. That's what he's saying. The life that flows in me flows through me and into you. So although there are different roles and responsibilities within the different parts of the tree, but they, are, they all share the same life. Amen. So it, it is really the purpose of our union. Uh, it, is the, it, it is this great exchange that happens. Um, notice that when we came to Christ, what happened is that you know, as we read in 2 Corinthians 5 and 20, verse 21, that he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So there was a divine exchange that was made. Jesus took what was mine and I got what was his. Jesus took my sin and I got his righteousness. Amen. He took my lack and I got his abundance. Uh, he, Jesus took my, let's say, my anxiety, and I got his peace. Amen. Um, you know, the, the, for example, the believer who, um, who is, I mean, who's now a believer and was addicted to, you know, whatever, you know, things that, that are not good and that were driving him. Well, once he became a Christian, what happened, the divine exchange was that Jesus took that addiction and this person got self-control, his self-control. Amen. When I came to Christ, Jesus took my fear and I got his faith. Um, he took my death and I got his life. Amen. So that brings us back again to, you know, the, the, what we are looking at, this teaching about our oneness with Christ. Amen. Through this divine exchange, we became one with Christ. Hallelujah. Um, he took what was mine and I got what was his. So now the person who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Hallelujah. And so that life that we are united with, that flows in him, flows through him and into us. So we share the same life. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and look at another passage um, actually, I have several passages that I would like to look at. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7 says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. So notice that we are told that we have a treasure on the inside of us, and that treasure is the power of God. Amen. But notice that, you know, Paul is quick to point that. Um, this great power is not from us, but it is from God. Hallelujah. Another scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. Again, 
that explains to us that we are now the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Amen. So God is dwelling in, he is the living God, and he's dwelling in his temple, and we are that temple. Amen. So the life of God dwells in us. Hallelujah. Um, let's see. First John 4 and verse 4 is another scripture that we, you know, we often quote, but I think, you know, do we really, uh, you know, meditate and reflect on, you know, how, how huge this is um, when we say that we are of God and that we have overcome the enemy because greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. Just think of it. Greater is he that is in us. So our spirit man is one with the great one, the greater one. Amen. Hallelujah. And because of that, we have overcome the enemy. Hallelujah. Praise God. And notice that, you know, that verse, 1 John 4, 4 starts with the words, ye are of God, little children. Hallelujah. And it goes on to say, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. The reason why he is in us, the greater one is in us because, because we are of him. We were born of him. Amen. We have our source from him. And therefore we are like him because he is now one with us. Um, just a couple more scriptures here, references that I'd like to look at. Um, Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. And this is the Apostle Paul who writes, he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Um, I, I want us to note here that it doesn't say that, you know, uh, the glory that will be revealed to us, but it says that the glory that will be revealed inside of us. Hallelujah. Um, and then last but not least, we'll go back to 1 John 4 and verse 17, which is again one of our base scriptures for this study, that as he is, that is, Jesus is in heaven, so are we in this world. Amen. So as Jesus is right now, so are we right now. Not tomorrow, not when we get to heaven. Amen. But right now, um, we don't have to wait until we get to heaven. The only thing about us that will change when we get to you know, heaven is our body. Um, as a person in Christ, our spirit will never change for all eternity. Um, again, it's because we are not in union with the Jesus who walked on the earth. We are now in union with the glorified Christ. Amen. Uh, we are in union with Christ who is seated at the right hand of God. And what is flowing through Christ in heaven is flowing through us on the earth. So, it's really essential for us to know uh, what we have in the inside of us. And, you know, it may seem to us sometimes that we need more, but that is not the case. Uh, the problem is that we might, we, we need to be aware of who we are and what we have. Uh, the greater our, our, our awareness of our being spirits and of the power that is available to us, the greater power we will see demonstrated in our life. Amen. Remember that we come from a more powerful kingdom than the kingdoms of this world. Amen. We are now citizens of heaven. We are born of God. Amen. We are supernatural beings. We are spiritual beings. So the supernatural should be natural to us. And that is why we are told um, in Romans, Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, that not only are we buried with him, that is Jesus, by baptism into death, it says that like as Jesus was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so 
we also should walk in newness of life. Amen. So just as Christ was buried, we were buried. Just as he rose from the, te- the dead, we were raised from the dead as well by the glory of the Father, the power of the resurrection that rose Jesus from the dead. We were raised by the same power. Amen. And just as now he is glorified and he's seated at the right hand of God, far above principalities and powers and dominions. Amen. So also are we seated in heavenly places with Christ. Hallelujah. And we are also expected to walk in that newness of life. Amen. So really, Jesus came that we may have life and life more abundantly. And that Greek word for life is Zoe, as we saw earlier, which means God's kind of life or the very life of God. Amen. So Jesus came to give us his divine life, his own life, God's life. And so we have God's nature in us. Amen. And we are born of him, born of his word. We, which we are told in First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, that is incorruptible. Amen. We are born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. And whatever is inc- incorruptible cannot be overcome. Amen. And so we are told that we are overcomers, again, because we are of God. And First John chapter 5 um, Yes, 1 John 5 tells us in verses 4 and 5, speaks about whoever is born of God, amen, overcomes the world. Whatever is born and whoever is born of God overcomes the world. Hallelujah. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen. So whoever is born of God is already called an overcomer because Christ has already overcome for us. So through faith, in Christ who over, overcame the world for us. We can say that we have already overcome. Therefore, we can boldly declare that we are overcomers. Amen. The new life that the believer lives now is the Zoe life of God. Um, so we have a great treasure in our spirit. You know, we are more than a conqueror through Christ who won for us. Amen. And the nature of God that is resident in the born again believer is invincible. It is life that overpowers all evil forces and anything that is contrary to it. It is life and power that subdues sickness and shortages and all spiritual powers of darkness. Hallelujah. Because greater is God in the born again believer than anything outside of him. And as Christ is, so are we in this world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, you know, think of this. Uh, and th- that's going back to the Old Testament, but you will be able to, to, to make that, that um, you know, comparison, if you can call it. Amen. To see what God accomplished in these people then and what he has done for us right now, how far greater it is. Amen. But yet just looking at what God did for him, that in itself was, you know, it's miraculous. And yet where we are right now, um, under this new covenant, having been made one with Christ is so much greater. But going back again, uh, as I said to the, this Old Testament, we are looking at the time when God sent the plagues to Egypt, when he wanted to get his people out of Egypt. Amen. Um, but notice what happened. The people, the Israelites were living in Egypt and God sent the plagues. And although is both Israelites and Egyptians, they were living in the same country, but yet they did not experience the same thing. Amen. The Israelites did not experience any of the plagues that the Lord sent. And in Exodus chapter 8 and verse 23, Reading from the Amplified Version, we see that God said, he said, and I will put a division and a sign of deliverance between my people and your people. And by tomorrow shall this sign be in evidence. Amen. So what happened? God actually put a, put a barrier up. Um, I think for those who have, um, you know, 
watch, let's say, science fiction movies or speak, you know, our way of scientific things, there is such a term as a force field, amen, that um, they, they place sometimes to, you know, put up a barrier to separate uh, two areas. And this force field is placed there. Amen. So we can see that what God did for the people of Israel, uh, the Israelites, was that he placed a spiritual force field uh, so that when the plague came, the Egyptians were trying to survive uh, the circumstances, but the Israelites were thriving despite the circumstances when the plagues came. So it was not only God showing his faithfulness, his love and provision for his people, but it was also a sign to the Egyptians that there was something different about the Israelites. And when you apply that to us, to the church, as born-again believers, we can say that we are in the world, but definitely not of it. Amen? So, um, you know, you may say that, you know, we may look like everyone else, but we are not like everyone else when we are believers. Uh, we may be in the same conditions, but the results are very different because God undertakes for us. He has a plan to get us to the destination to the, that he has for us. He has a destiny that he has planned for us. Amen. So in closing, let me say that, um, you know, first, I mean, sorry, you know, Colossians chapter one, uh, verses one and, and three is instructing us that we have been raised to new life with Christ and therefore we are to set our sight on the realities of heaven, to think about the things of heaven. Um, let's go ahead and read that passage. If then you've been raised with Christ, I'm sorry, I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Version, Colossians 1 verses 1 to 3. If then you've been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, Aim at and seek, seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God and set your mind and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, not on the things that are on the earth. For as far as this world is concerned, you have died and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. Amen. So as we, you know, set our sight on the realities of heaven, and the more we keep thinking about these realities, the more real it will become to us. And we will become increasingly conscious of it, and therefore we will find it easier to access. Hallelujah. Um, and one last scripture that I would like to look at is John chapter 17 verses 14 through 17. Again, this is Jesus speaking. Actually, this is his prayer to the Father. And he says, I have given them thy word. With them is his disciples. Amen. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray that thou shouldest take them. No, I'm sorry. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou, thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. Well, this is Jesus' prayer here. Um, and in essence, he was saying that even though we would be in the world, that God would separate us from the evil in this world. And Jesus knew that because we were just like him when we became born again, we became one with, with him, that we did not have to experience the same results as the world. And so in verse 17, he goes on to say, sanctify them through thy word. Hallelujah. And the word sanctify means to separate or to cut out away from. Amen. And we learn again from scripture that as believers, we've come alive to Christ because the law 
There is a law in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that is at work in us that makes us free from the law of sin and death. And so the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus cuts the believer out from this world system. And so truly, we do not have to live out of the world's provision. Amen. In other words, depend on the world's economic system or the world's health system. Why? Because we have a greater system at work that, 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 is, that is at work in the kingdom to which we belong and from the place that is now our home. Amen. And God calls us to live by that system which we now belong to, which is heaven. So we are to live by heaven's system and we live according to heaven's law, which is the law of life. And all of this is tied in to the fact that this, this is how this new creation in Christ is called to live. Why? Because he has become a spirit being that is now one, united, one with Christ. As he is Jesus, is in heaven, so are we now here, right here in this earth, right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. In, Lord, we thank you. <clears throat> thank you for your word to us today, O oh God. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6, your word says that as we have received him, that is Christ Jesus, our Lord, that we are now to walk in him. Father, we thank you for teaching us by your spirit how to walk in Christ as spiritual beings and how to let him direct us on everything from the way we think to the, the things we say and what we do. Lord, we pray that your power will flow through us by your Holy Spirit who indwells us. We pray that your word, O oh God, will rule in our heart. We pray that the mind of Christ will rule our thoughts as we meditate on your word. Lord, let Christ live through us as we renew our mind with your word. And we pray that, Lord, our life will become more and more glorious because as we behold your word, we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. So Father, I thank you that by your grace, Christ in us, the hope of glory will be displayed in and through us. Everything that is honorable, that is of splendor, of strength, of majesty, of health, and of wealth, everything that is wholesome and holy, that represents the divine, will be demonstrated in our lives. And all this will be for the glory, O oh God, of your most holy name and for our own rejoicing. Lord, we thank you that indeed you have begun this wonderful work in us and you're faithful to bring it to completion. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we thank God for this wonderful word that he has for us. And uh, I invite you to join us again next week at the same time. I pray that this study has been a blessing and that you will take it with you and allow God to download more in your spirit. Amen. And uh, not only to live it out, but to share it with others. God bless you and have a good night.